on live at Fire Station Number Three in Sierra Vista, off of Cesar Chavez and Charleston Road. Uh, this is the 23rd anniversary of 9/11, and um, and so this is a ceremony to remember the victims and the attack on our country 23 years ago today. And so uh, we had some audio issues earlier. If you tuned in uh, right now, the audio seems to be working at the moment. So let's hope it stays that way. Uh, there's a number of people that have gathered here. I'm going to switch the camera around so that you can see the audience. Quite a few people have come down here 23 years after the fact to remember. And we have the mayor. He's getting ready to deliver some messages and other dignitaries that are here today. So thank you for tuning in and joining us for this uh, very solemn and important ceremony. If you're just tuning in, we're at fire station number three here in Sierra Vista. And this is a remembrance ceremony for 9-11 that happened 23 years ago today. This is going on from 6 till 7 o'clock. So if you're just tuning in, if you're just tuning in, this is a uh, ceremony here for 9-11 Remembrance. Would everyone please find a seat? And then also the firefighters in the back, classic, stand in the back. If everybody could find a seat. stand and remain standing for the posting of the colors presented by our multi-agency color guard. 
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air gave That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please remain standing. We have a special guest from Colonel Johnson's first grade elementary, and they're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance for us. They lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's sing. colors. Please remain standing for the invocation by Father Greg of St. Andrews of the Apostle Church.
Good evening. <clears throat> An invocation is normally words that we address to God on behalf of a group gathered for a special occasion. This evening I'm going to reverse that pattern. I want you to listen, please, to these words, which we can imagine are being spoken to us by God. You say you will never forget where you were when you heard the news on September 11th. Neither will I. I was on the 110th floor in a smoke-filled room with a man who called his wife to say goodbye. I held his fingers steady as he dialed. I gave him the peace to say, honey, I'm not going to make it, but it's okay. I'm ready to go. I was with his wife when he called as she fed breakfast to their children and watched with horror and dismay the images on the television screen. I held her up as she tried to understand his words and as she realized he wouldn't be coming home that night. I was in the stairwell on the 23rd floor when a woman cried out to me for help. I said, oh honey, I've been knocking on the door of your heart for 50 years. Of course, I'm going to show you the way home. Trust in my love for you now. We're going to walk out of this together. I was at the base of the building with the chaplain, ministering to his injured comrades as they were carried down the stairs until he took his last breath, and I relieved him of his duties and took him home. I was with New York Fire Department Ladder Company 3 when the captain said, let's go, and we did. I was with him because I am always there. When care becomes sacrifice, I am always there. I am that greater love that I ask you to have. I was with that young husband and father as the plane struck his office in the Pentagon. He did not have time to realize what was happening, but he knew of me. He's known me his whole life. I've been with him. I was on all four of those planes, in every seat with every person. I was with the crew as they were overtaken. I was in the hearts of the leaders there, comforting and assuring them, and through them I assured and comforted others. I was in Texas, Virginia, California, Michigan, Sierra Vista. I was standing next to you when you heard the terrible news. Did you realize that I was there with you? I want you to know that I saw every face I knew every name, though not all know me. I created you. I will never, ever forsake you. Some met me for the first time on the 86th floor. Some reached out to me with their last breath. Some couldn't hear me calling to them through the smoke and flames. Come to me. Come this way. Take my hand. But I was there. I will always be there at the ground zero of your life. <coughs> No, you were not in the towers that day. You may not know why, but I do. However, if you were there in that explosive moment in time, would you have reached out for me? You see, September 11th, 2001 was not the end of the journey for you, but someday the journey will end. And I will be there for you as well. Seek me now while I may be found that at any moment you'll be able to say with that captain, let's go. I will be in the stairwell of your final moment. I am with you always, even to the consummation of the ages. Please be seated. Uh, could we get a round of applause for the, uh, the color guard, Jennifer Cheris, and the uh, first graders from Colonel Johnson Elementary School. Uh, great job.
Good evening and welcome to the 2024 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony. I would like to take a moment to recognize some of the special guests that are present with us this evening. City of Sierra Vista, members of council, Mayor Clea McCaw, Mayor Pro Tem, Carolyn Humphrey, Councilman Ro uh, Mark Rodriguez, Council Member William Binning, Council Member Dr. Angelica Laundry, and City Manager Chuck Petuchek. Also like to uh, recognize uh, over uh, to my left, uh, Chief Jones, Fire Chief, City of Servicea, Deputy Fire Chief, Bradley Deaver, Police Chief, Chris Heiser, also in the crowd, retired chief, fire chief, Ron York, Re retired captain, David Wilcox, Fry Fire District, fire chief, Mark Savage, retired engineer, John Trujillo, retired firefighter, Gary Jones, Retired Captain Marty Jones. Also in the crowd this evening, Lieutenant Colonel Gil Juarez, Colonel Childs, Colonel Deaver, and as a special guest, we have Loring and Eileen Miller, first responders to the rescue efforts at Ground Zero. Also a special guest, reti retired FDNY firefighter, Al Levine. Al Levine retired from Rescue 4 in 1992. In September 11th, Rescue 4 lost six members. Captain Brian Hickey, Lieutenant Kevin Dowdell, <coughs> Firefighter Terrence Patrick Farrell, Firefighter William J. Mahoney, Firefighter Peter Allen Nelson, and firefighter Darrell V. Pearsall. And if I forgot anybody, I do apologize. But lastly, to the men and women serving or who have served in the U.S. military, law enforcement, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, dispatchers, firefighters, and EMS professionals, thank you. If you would, please join me in welcoming the Mayor of Sierra Vista, Mayor Clea McCaw. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Today, we gather and remember and honor the victims, survivors, and heroes of September 11, 2001. 23 years have passed since that fateful morning when our nation was forever changed. Yet the pain and the memories remain vivid in our hearts and minds. But in our darkest hour, we also saw the very best of humanity. We saw the courage in the, fear, in the face of fear, compassion amidst chaos, and unity in the time of division. The world watched as Americans from all walks of life came together to support one another, to rebuild and to show that our spirit cannot be broken. Let us take a moment to recognize the ongoing sacrifices of our military personnel, first responders, law enforcement, veterans, and our families who have served in the years since this great tragedy, working to prevent such attacks and protect our freedoms. As we move forward, let us renew our commitment to building a world of greater understanding, peace, and security. Let us strive to create a society where hatred and extremism have no place, where our differences are celebrated rather than feared. To the families who lost loved ones, to the survivors who carry physical and emotional scars, and to those affected by 
the events of 9-11. Know that you're not alone. Our community stands with you today and always. May we never forget the lives lost, the heroes that were displayed, and the lessons learned on September 11, 2001. And may we honor their memory by working together to build a brighter and more peaceful future for all. Thank you and may God bless our great city of Sierra Vista and bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor McCaw. Having been the first fire chief I worked for, it is my honor to introduce this year's keynote speaker. Retired fire chief Bruce Thompson began his career in the Baltimore County Fire Department, Maryland, in 1974. In 1991, Chief Thompson joined the service of fire department where he promoted to the rank of fire chief in 1985. In 2005, Chief Thompson was inducted into the Arizona Fire Service Hall of Fame and retired from the fire department in 2007. Please welcome retired fire chief Bruce Thompson. Twenty-three years ago today, September 11, 2001, was a day that very few of us will ever forget if you're about 30 years old or older. Most of us watched in shock and horror as the South Tower of the World Trade Center burned, wondering how a plane could hit a beautiful big building on such a bright, clear morning. And then we cringed in disbelief as we saw the second plane crash into the North Tower. It dawned on us then that these were deliberate acts of terror, and they were soon followed by reports of another crash into the Pentagon, and then finally still another in rural Pennsylvania. We were glued to our televisions while our emotions ran from fear to sorrow to compassion, and then for many of us to a furious rage at whatever depraved people could have committed such inconceivable acts against our country. I believe that when we realized that this was a brutally savage attack on us as a nation, as a people, even while the tragic events were still unfolding before us, the sense of unity and patriotism that, that flourished later on had begun to emerge. I've heard it said that the crash of Flight 93 in Shanksville was the first victory in the war against terror, and I agree with that. I recall going into work that morning after having watched about an hour and a half of that at home with my wife and the crew that was scheduled to go off duty at 8 o'clock that morning had also been glued to the TV set at the station. And we all shared the same emotions, sorrow, disbelief, and rage. We wanted to do something, anything, because that's our job. But there was nothing we could do but watch. It was a feeling of helplessness, and frustration like none of us had ever experienced before. For those of us in public safety at the time, September 11th represents a loss of nearly unimaginable scope. We know that about 90 firefighters and about 110 law enforcement officers perish in the line of duty every year on average. And we've struggled as professions to figure out ways to reduce those numbers. Fire and police personnel know that theirs can be a dangerous job 
and that any day could present them with a situation that could threaten their very survival. But when 343 firefighters and 71 police officers died in a single day responding to a single event, it struck a blow to the public safety community that remains to this day almost incomprehensible. But it wasn't just firefighters and police officers who died that day. 55 military personnel were killed at the Pentagon. An additional 2,513 were killed in the terrorist attacks on 9-11, as represented, represented by the butterflies on this beautiful memorial behind me. In total, it is among the largest peacetime losses of life in American history. Most people were simply going about their daily lives, going to work in the towers or at the Pentagon. Some were flying for business, others for pleasure, and some just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. We remember and honor those many people who were taken from us that day. We pledge then and we renew that pledge now that we will never forget them. And as I look out at this crowd, it's obvious to me that this community has honored that pledge. And we're very grateful to have you with us here this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Thompson. This year's ringing of the bell will be in honor of Captain Billy Burke, FDNY, and NYPD Officer Santos Valentine, Jr. We will also be honoring NYPD Detective Luis Alvarez. Luis was a first responder to the rescue effort who has since died because of illness attributed to his work at Ground Zero. Our first honoree, Captain William Billy Burke, Jr., FDNY Engine Company 21. On September 11, 2001, Captain William Burke and members of Engine 21 were in the North Tower, aiding in the immediate response to the attacks. They were still inside the building when the South Tower collapsed at 9.59. Understanding the North Tower could collapse at any moment, he ordered his men to evacuate. But he did not follow them. Instead, he stayed behind to help two civilians down from the 27th floor. Abe Zamanowitz and Ed Bia were computer analysts at the Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield and close friends for many years. Bia was wheelchair bound, making evacuation very difficult. Zamanowitz refused to leave Bia behind and neither would Captain Burke. With Abe and Billy carrying Ed down, they made it to the 21st floor. Stopping there, Abe and Ed placed calls to family and friends, reassuring them that they were with the firemen and were on their way down. Billy also called a friend who begged him to be safe. He reportedly told her, this is my job, this is what I do. Then the North Tower collapsed. Abe Zamanowitz, Ed Bea, and Billy Burke were all killed. Captain Burke would be the only firefighter from Engine 21 to perish on September 11th. Our second honoree of the evening is Santos Valentine Jr. Assigned to NYPD ESU Truck 7. Officer Santos Valentine 
was killed in September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks while attempting to rescue the victims trapped in the World Trade Center. Officer Valentine had been a member of the New York Police Department for 17 years, assigned to the ESU Truck 7. The Emergency Services Unit is part of the Special Operations Bureau of the New York City Police Department. The unit provides specialized support and advanced equipment to other NYPD units. Members of the ESU are cross-trained in multiple disciplines for police work, medical, and rescue work. He is survived by his parents, three sisters, and two brothers. His sister also served with the NYPD. Officer Valentine was posthumously awarded the New York City Police Department's Medal of Honor for his heroic actions. A canine unit for the United States Coast Guard was named in honor of Officer Valentine. The next individual I'll be recognizing solidifies the need to never forget these attacks and the obligation we must meet every year and pay respect. As of September this year, 363 FDNY firefighters have died from their 9-11 injury and illnesses. As a reminder, 343 firefighters were killed on September 11, and now we have surpassed those tragic numbers. As of March this year, more than 130,000 people were enrolled in the World Trade Center Health Program. More than 37,000 first responders and survivors have World Trade Center Health Certified Cancers. It is to these people we must live up to the phrase, never forget. This year's post 9-11 honoree is Luis Gustavo Alvarez. Detective Alvarez died as a result of cancer that he developed following his assignment to the search and recovery efforts at the World Trade Center site following the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Detective Alvarez was a U.S. Marine Corps veteran and had served with the NYPD for 20 years. Detective Alvarez never stopped fighting. One week before his last chemo treatment and entrance into hospice care, frail and his body riddled with cancer, Alvarez testified at a House Judiciary Committee hearing and was quoted, you all said you would never forget. Well, I'm here to make sure that you don't. I will not stand by and watch as my friends with cancer from 9-11, like me, are valued less than anyone else. Luis Gustavo Alvarez died June 29, 2019. He was 53 years old. He is survived by his wife, three sons, parents, and three siblings. Striking the four fives. The sound of the bell holds special significance for firefighters. Historically, the toll of a bell summoned members to the station, signal the beginning of a shift, notified departments of a call for help, and indicated a call was completed and the unit had returned to the station. Departments also sounded a series of bells when a firefighter had died in the line of duty to alert all members that a comrade had made the ultimate sacrifice. One of the most meaningful series of bells is commonly called striking the four fives. The fire service is rich with ceremony, custom, and tradition. Our custom of rendering final honors has its origins in the fire department of the city of New York, where many years ago, long before the advent of radio or pagers, fire alarms and daily announcements were dispatched from central headquarters to outlying firehouses by a system of bell commands and telegraph. Each different type of alarm or announcement would have its own number and series of bell strikes. 
When a firefighter died in the line of duty, headquarters would transmit five bell strikes repeated in four series with a slight pause between each series, followed by the announcement. This was done as long ago as 1865 in the New York City Fire Department to inform the rank and file of the death of President Abraham Lincoln. The custom has continued down to present day. Engineer French, please transmit the signal 5555 five, five, for FDNY Captain Billy Burke of Engine Company 21 NYPD Officer Santos Valentine Jr. and NYPD Detective Luis Gustavo Alvarez. This concludes our 9-11 ceremony. Thank you for coming and please drive safe. Live and local, I'm Brett Allen down here at Fire Station Number 3 in Sierra Vista. That uh, just wrapped up this year's remembrance ceremony of the victims of 9-11 and our attack as a country. Thank you for watching, and uh, have a good evening.